In Spokane, Washington, young women are turning up dead. We were having a flurry of victims. Uh, the pressure of that on the detectives was pretty immense. A police force sifts through the clues. Can an ordinary person transform into a serial killer? The narrative of Robert Lee Yates Jr., famously known as the grocery bag killer, offers a chilling glimpse into how an average individual can tread a path of heinous crimes and unimaginable atrocities. Within this narrative, we shall delve into the life, crimes, legal battles, and appeals of Robert Yates Jr., all while paying solemn homage to the victims who tragically fell prey to his malevolent acts. So propel someone to commit such horrifying deeds. What insights can we gain from the unsettling story of Robert Yates? And might there be others, concealed among us, harboring their own hidden darkness? Join us as we unravel the unsettling saga of Robert Lee Yates, commencing with a deep dive into the shocking details of his early life. Before we continue with this story, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. Early Life The story of Robert Yates begins in Oak Harbor, Washington, where he was born on May 27, 1952, into a seemingly ordinary middle-class family. Little did anyone know that this unassuming boy would grow up to be one of the most notorious serial killers in the state's history is in a household that attended the local Seventh-day Adventist church. There were early signs of a conventional upbringing. However, a dark family history lurked beneath the surface. Before Robert's birth, his grandmother committed a gruesome act, killing his grandfather with an axe in 1945, hinting at a legacy of violence that would resurface in the years to come. In 1975, Robert Yates took a job as a correction officer at the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla, employed by the Washington State Department of Corrections. This position would provide a sinister backdrop for his future crimes as he came into contact with hardened criminals within the prison walls. It was here that he began to take his first steps into the world of law enforcement. Murders Robert Lee Yates Jr committed his first murders in 1975 when he shot and killed two college students who were picnicking. Many of his subsequent victims were sex workers with substance abuse issues, and he would often do drugs with them. Yates initially solicited the victims, engaged in sexual activity with them, and then killed them, usually in his Ford van. He would dump their bodies in rural locations, and all of his victims died from gunshot wounds to the head or heart. Eight of the murders were committed with a Raven 25 caliber handgun, and one attempted murder was linked to the same model of handgun. In 1998, he was asked to provide a DNA sample to Spokane police but refused, claiming it was too extreme of a request for a family man. Crimes between 1975 and 1997. Robert Lee Yates Jr. left a harrowing trail of victims. It began in 1975 when he callously ended the lives of Patrick Oliver, 21, and Patricia Savage, 22, who were found shot in the head near Walla Walla after disappearing on their way to a simple swim and picnic. The pattern continued in 1988, when the partial skeleton of Stacy Hawn, 23, was discovered near Big Lake, with Yates later confessing to picking her up. In 1996, Shannon Zielinski, 38, met a similar fate, found shot in the head in Mead, with her partially nude and badly decomposed body discarded near a school bus stop. Zielinski, with a criminal record, was deeply entrenched in sex work. The year 1997 saw more victims added to Yates' list of horrors. Heather Hernandez, 20, was discovered in an overgrown lot in Spokane, having been shot five days earlier. She had recently moved to the area and faced two arrests for sex work. On that same tragic day, Jennifer Joseph, 16, was found shot in the head in a Spokane field with evidence pointing to a white male. Joseph had a troubled background involving a move to Spokane, methamphetamine use, and an entanglement in sex work. Additionally, Darla Scott, 29, was found with partially decayed remains near a golf course in 1997, having succumbed to a gunshot wound, adding to the distressing pattern of violence and victimization Yates left in his wake. Continuation in December 1997. In December 1997, the reign of violence and victimization, orchestrated by Robert Lee Yates Jr., continued to unfold. The month bore witness to a series of chilling crimes, Melinda Lee Mercer, 24, met a tragic end, being discovered shot and abandoned in a Tacoma field on December 7. Shockingly, during Yates' trial, it was revealed that Mercer had displayed remarkable resilience, 
managing to chew through the plastic bags that covered her head after being shot multiple times. Mercer, who had no criminal record or connections to the world of sex work, worked as a waitress. On December 18, 1997, the body of Sean Johnson, 36, was unearthed lying roughly a mile from the remains of Darla Scott. She bore two gunshot wounds and two plastic bags covering her head, having gone missing since October 29, 1997. The same grim month bore witness to the discovery of the bodies of Sean McClanahan, 39, and Lori Wasson, 31, in a gully in Spokane. Both women had suffered the same cruel fate, being shot twice in the head, with their heads shrouded in three plastic bags each. Susan, who had battled heroin addiction, turned to sex work to support her substance use, while McClanahan, too, grappled with heroin and had faced an arrest for forging a check during a tumultuous period in her life. A variety of backgrounds. Lori Wasson was involved in breeding and training Rottweilers, and operated adult family home licensed by the state. These cases illustrate the tragic and diverse backgrounds of Yates' victims, from waitresses and mothers seeking recovery from addiction to individuals caught in the grip of substance abuse and sex work. Continuation in early 1998. In early 1998, Robert Lee Yates Jr. continued his brutal spree of violence. On February 8, 1998, Sonny Gail Oster, a 41-year-old mother of two, was found shot to death in rural Spokane. She had disappeared in October, just after completing a drug treatment program. Then on April 1, 1998, the lifeless body of Linda Marie Mabin, known as Barefoot Linda, was discovered 100 yards from the remains of other victims. Mabin, a sex worker, had gone missing since November 22, 1997. Melody Ann Murphin, missing since mid-May 1998, was considered a victim of the same killer but remained undiscovered until six months after Yates' arrest. On July 7, 1998, Michael and Joanne Durning, age 47, was tragically found shot in the head in Spokane, her body partially obscured by a hot tub cover. The daughter of a Marine Corps colonel had faced a challenging life, including struggles with drugs and custody issues concerning her son, a survivor's account. In a significant turn of events in August 1998, the case took a new direction. Christine Smith filed a police report on August 1, 1998, reporting an assault and robbery in which she was struck in the head during a sex act. Remarkably, she later identified Robert Lee Yates Jr. as her attacker after seeing his photo in the newspaper following his arrest. Smith stands as the only known survivor of Yates' heinous crimes, providing a crucial link to his capture and bringing his reign of terror to an end. The tragic story of Connie Ellis LaFontaine. In October 1998, the body of Connie Ellis LaFontaine was discovered in Tacoma, bearing a fatal gunshot wound to the head, her identity concealed by plastic bags. Her life had taken a tragic turn, marked by her son's severe heart condition, leading her into a world of drug addiction and sex work. This poignant story highlights the struggles of individuals trapped in the cycle of substance abuse and violence. Remarkably, a survivor's bravery played a crucial role in identifying the perpetrator, ultimately leading to the end of Robert Lee Yates Jr.'s reign of terror. Victims Robert Yates Jr. was responsible for the murders of numerous individuals over a span of several decades. His victims include Patrick Allen Oliver and Susan Patricia Savage, whose bodies were discovered on July 14, 1975. He also took the lives of Stacy Elizabeth Hahn in 1988, Shannon Renzielinski in 1996, and Heather Louise Hernandez, Jennifer Ann Joseph, and Darla Sue Scott in 1997. In the same year, he claimed the lives of Melinda Lee Mercer, Sean Lynette Johnson, Sean Ann McClenahan, and Lori Page was on. Sonny Gail Oster and Linda Marie Mabin were his victims in early 1998, and Melody Ann Murphin fell victim to him. Finally, Miglin Joanne Durning and Connie Lynn Ellis LaFontaine met tragic ends in 1998. These victims endured immense suffering at the hands of Robert Yates before justice was served. Convictions and Appeals Since the early 2000s, Robert Yates Jr. was finally brought to justice. He faced a teen counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder in Spokane County Superior Court. Overwhelming evidence, including DNA and victims' as belongings found in his attic, led to his confession and a plea bargain to avoid the death penalty. He received a 408-year prison sentence. However, legal battles continued in Pierce County, where he was initially sentenced to death for two more murders, later appealing on grounds of fairness. The Washington Supreme Court upheld his convictions, but commuted the death sentence to life without parole following a 2018 ruling 
declaring the death penalty unconstitutional. Yates now serves a life sentence. References To unravel the full story of Robert Yates Jr. and his reign of terror, one can turn to an array of sources that provide a comprehensive account of the case. Reputable publications such as the Seattle Times, Seattle Post-Intelligencer, and the Washington Post have extensively covered the investigations, legal proceedings, and the impact of Yates' actions on the victims' families. In Body Counts by Burl Barry, readers can find an in-depth examination of the case, shedding light on the darkest corners of Yates' life and crimes. Additionally, newspaper archives document the unfolding events from the initial investigations to the legal outcomes. In conclusion, the chilling story of Robert Yates Jr., the grocery bag killer, is a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity. His heinous crimes left a trail of suffering and heartache in their wake. The victims, whose lives were tragically cut short, deserve to be remembered, and their stories serve as a testament to the resilience of those who seek justice. The diligent efforts of law enforcement and the thorough coverage of the case by reputable publications shed light on the darkness of Yates's crimes. May we never forget the lives lost and the importance of seeking justice for those who cannot speak for themselves. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.